having a good understanding of that historical perspective is very important and critical. This here is the actually 1855 GLO map for the area. Again, you can get this online yourself. And I've just traced in there, this is showing you what used to be called the Gold River, at least in 1855, they had it labeled as the Gold River in this map. And so you can see here kind of the channel locations. This is where the dam's at. You can see lower Table Rock, and it says Indian Reservation across there. So it, it's pretty interesting. The other thing here is that you can see uh, where Bear Creek was coming in as well. And Bear Creek obviously has been moved down at the, uh, where it comes into the Rogue River as well. So you can see some pretty significant changes. And as we're kind of unearthing some of these old historical photos, these historical aerials, um, and then piecing them together to kind of see how the river's uh, behaving, so to speak, um, in the context of where it's at today. The other thing that uh, we've spent quite a bit of time doing, and, and it's been a big question, kind of the, the biggest question for most people, has just been the wetlands. And, and there's been a lot of assumptions that, hey, this is just one big, huge wetland in this reservoir area, and so what are we going to do about that, or what, what's going to happen to that? And so, um, uh, Leandra, who's here tonight as well, crawled around and chased the bears around out there and, and all the other different things out there and got uh, wrapped up in the vines and everything and basically came out with some mapping of wetlands where um, in order for something to qualify as a wetlands, it has to have three components. It has to have the right soil, which is a hydric soil. It has to have the, the right hydrology uh, or groundwater table or water uh, that ponds. And it has to have the right vegetation, hydrophytic vegetation. Um, and, and it becomes very obvious as you start to look at this stuff more, what, what, hydrophytic, what hydrophytic vegetation looks like. Blackberry bushes are not wetland plants, okay? <laughs> and so interestingly enough, when you walk across this, if you can get through the blackberries in most places, um, that's what is predominant in kind of the, one of the big keys out here is that there's a lot of blackberries um, that really are not necessarily wetland plants. There's also a lot of grapes, and grapes don't necessarily grow on wetlands. And there's a lot of other kind of different species out there that aren't wetlands plants. Um, and then the other thing too in a lot of cases out here is there's not this hybrid soils that you would anticipate to support a wetland. But it becomes very obvious, and so this green area is what we've initially, um, this is just kind of the preliminary take from our perspective which uh, you know, is just the first cut in the regulatory agencies, which would be Army Corps and Division of State Lands, they actually have to approve, agree, or disagree with, with our findings. And so that's the process that we're in right now, is that we'll, we'll present our findings to them. They'll make ultimately the decision of whether they agree or not. But these are the initial findings. And what you can find out here, especially if you've ever been out on, down under this, into this area, is that this blue, uh, this blue is what we're mapping as wetlands right here. And there's isolated pockets of wetlands, and there's a lot of marginal kind of fringe wetlands around the waterway, all within the ordinary high water for the most part. And then this is all pretty much uplands, and the reason for that is I, primarily the vegetation. It's just not hydrophytic vegetation. And so these are the initial findings. I think we we're talking in the range up here of, of over 350 acres of area. And uh, in really being less than like a, about 20% or so uh, wetlands in this particular area. The other thing too is that that's kind of interesting is when you look at those historical photos and, and we start to piece those together and talk about them, is that you can see that this was uh, predominantly a, a lot of cottonwoods and, and other big trees out there. And so it wasn't necessarily like a low marshy wetland type area like we think of as the classical wetland. Again, those are, you know, our preliminary draft, you know, the, the, those definitely can change, you know, depending on the regulatory agencies and what they, uh, what they want as far as information and, and detail as well. So those are more preliminary. So where we're at right now is that the field work for the most part has been completed. Um, you'll see people running around out there a little bit more. We've got some sediment samples to, to collect downstream in the Rogue River for the hydraulic modeling. Um, and just some minor information that we'll be continuing to collect. The existing condition surface model, kind of the, the lay of the land, if you want to call it that, that's been developed, and uh, so we're in pretty good shape there. The environmental assessment uh, is starting at this point as far as trying to scope out the, 
purpose and need, and then also develop the alternatives so that we can <coughs> evaluate those alternatives, uh, which John was talking about earlier. And then the hydraulic modeling is, is just starting as well, too. So now we have a surface model, we can kick into a hydraulic modeling scenario. Wetlands determination has become, uh, basically come back and the preliminary determination is complete. That will be turned around and submitted to the uh, Army Corps and DSL for their uh, concurrence or changes. And then the other thing that uh, we have is the cultural resources. There's two things that go along with cultural resources. One is the historic context as far as kind of the buildings, the dam, things like that. George Kramer in Ashland is going to be our historical preservationist uh, who's done work with us on other projects, including the Gold Hill Dam. He's very familiar with the site. And then uh, Mark Tveskov is going to be doing, out of Southern Oregon University, is going to be doing the, uh, basically what I call the, the below ground. Uh, cultural resources, and that would be um, just looking at the impacts to uh, if there are any artifacts or any types of potentially um, uh, potential artifacts out there. He's looking into that and will be uh, generating a report for that as well. So that's the cultural resources, and that's starting uh, right now as well. That's basically where we're at today. And uh, so at this point, this is a scoping meeting for the, the environmental assessment to get people's input and feedback and thoughts uh, so that we can make sure that we're studying the right things and going about the, the right, trying to get questions or answers to the right questions. So at this point, uh, I'll turn it over to John and go from there. As Scott said, I mean, the purpose is we want to hear from you um, regarding the environmental assessment and look at those things that we might be missing in this process. We do have Scott here, they've done quite a bit of work. Uh, I present some stuff on kind of one of the board of commissioners of that. We weren't going to do a format like we did last time where everybody comes up and uh, makes a statement. But if you have a question or two, we'll entertain about five or six questions. Um, and then what we'd like to do is after those questions, we're going to uh, divide up and we're going to have the uh, research scientists and the rest of us located at stations on the wall and we can hopefully answer your questions on a more one-on-one -on -one uh, direct uh, uh, interaction there. Again, we ask you to make sure to fill out the comment form, or provide us some comments if you have them, regarding especially the scope of the study and you know, the alternatives that we're uh, analyzing. So, like I say, we'll take five or six questions if anybody has any. Here and then over here. Uh, yeah, I have one question. Raise hands. How many people here want the dam removed? Raise your hand, please. Okay, how many people do not want the dam removed? Raise your hand. Okay, 65, 35. Thank you. <laughs> Disagree with that. Right here? Yeah, in the event that um, you decide not to go forward, how do these guys are doing this great research and experimentation and measurement get paid? That's a very good question. They asked me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were interested. The way that we put this contract together is that they're going to be compensated for the work they do. So if if we do, we get all the way through the environmental assessment. So the sediment transport studies are done, the wetland analysis are done, all the permits are obtained, and we get all the way through there, and then the Board of Commissioners votes to, to not proceed. They will be paid, and the funding agency, NOAA, will reimburse us as we pay the contractor. So they will be made whole up to whatever point that they stop. Right here. Down there, I'm a veteran, and I'm surprised after one day after Veterans Day that you didn't have a pledge of allegiance. I really am considering the veterans put us on the map. Okay, in order. The second part of that is talk about elevation. And this is a question I, I spoke to you earlier today. When they did Savage Rapids, they did no elevation studies that I could find anywhere. The BLM study was not that, because it was not conclusive. You show different figures of monies and monetary expenses in here, $50 million to upgrade the dam or to do something different with it. They just charged us over $56 million to take out of there, and they're going to be putting it back into it. I don't know. I guess the bottom line of all this, we've done all these studies and all these different things. A half a mile down the river from the Savage Rapids Dam that they took out, there's heavy metal deposits that are environmentally unsafe, and they're in massive amounts, and it's only gotten a half a mile down from the dam. You can go down to a magnet and stick a magnet in the water and pull those heavy metals up. 